CV and do you like my new Valentine's Day backdrop? I thought it'd be really cool to go with roses and colorful flowers because Valentine's Day is coming up and people usually get flowers on Valentine's Day. But before I tell you how to win this giveaway, I'm going to be announcing the winner of last month's backdrop. To enter that backdrop, you had to go and subscribe to my new channel called Jessie's Bookshelf. And we have over 10,000 followers over there, so thank you so much. All of you guys are just my family. You're amazing. So obviously it was hard to pick one person. But the winner that I chose is Pi Pi Pon. I hope I'm saying that right. Your username is so cute. So if you would like to enter to win this backdrop behind me, all you have to do is be subscribed to this channel. So my Jessie Mead channel, turn on your notification bell, and then head over to my Jessie's Bookshelf channel. Subscribe there if you have not. And all you have to do is comment on the very first video that I posted there. You can comment anything. You could tell me if you like to read, what your favorite book is, who your favorite book character is. Try to center it around books and if you comment on that very first video, you'll be entered to win this backdrop. And I'm really going to be looking for people who like to interact with my channel over the next month. If I see you commenting and watching the videos that I post there, you're more likely to be chosen. And once again, thank you so much for all of your support. So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we're going to be talking about a very creepy true story. This is completely true. It's about a family who was stalked and harassed by someone known as the Watcher, which is already a super creepy name in itself. But before I delve right into this creepy true story, I just want to remind you guys, because it is now February, we still have a small amount of our Valentine's Day mystery boxes available on the website. It is filled with so many cool things. We've got plushies, we've got necklaces, we've got makeup bags, we've got these cute little mint packages. I even have a Valentine's Day card in there of Mr. Tumnus and Winnie. And we also have a ton of new Valentine's Day items on our website. We have plushies on there. We have so many cool things, so definitely go check it out because our website is decked out for Valentine's Day, so I will link everything down below. All right, guys, so let's get right into today's video. Derek and Maria Broadus couldn't have been more excited to move into their dream house at 657 Boulevard in the town of Westfield, New Jersey. But as the couple was preparing to settle into the $1.3 million house with their three children, they received this disturbing note in the mail. Now at the very bottom, this note was only signed the watcher. It had no return address and whoever wrote this letter to this family seemed to be watching them very closely. The first letter arrived on a June evening. Jarek Broadus had been painting a few walls at his family's new home. And after finishing up, he checked the mail to discover a white card-sized envelope and it was addressed in this thick handwriting to the new owner. Now the letter started off with these warm words of welcome so it seemed pretty normal at first but it soon developed into these bizarre and threatening messages and this person said that they had been watching their house for decades even before they moved in. They even claimed that their father and grandfather before them were also watchers of this specific house for some reason. So literally through this watcher's generation of family, they've just been watching this house. Here are some of the things that were in the letter. He said, do you know the history of this house? Do you know what lies within the walls of 657 Boulevard? Why are you here? I will find out. Like, could you imagine just moving into a house and receiving letters in your mailbox by that? Excuse me, no. Some other things that were in the letter said, I see already that you have flooded 657 Boulevard with contractors so that you can destroy the house as it was supposed to be. Tisk tisk tisk, bad mood. You don't want to make 657 Boulevard unhappy. So like whoever's watching this house is upset that they're making renovations and changing it to be their own. This person always wants the house to be the way that it was, even though it's not their house, so why do they care? Even more disturbing, the watcher noted the Broadus's three children and asked if there were more on the way. He was saying things like, do you need to fill the house with the young blood I requested? Better for me. Ew. Unsettled, Derek Broadus called the Westfield police who recommended moving any construction equipment they had outside the house away in case the watcher became bold enough to throw it through one of the home's windows. The police also told them not to say anything about this case to their neighbors yet 
because now all of their neighbors essentially were suspects. So then this family decided to contact the previous family who had lived in this house to see if they had been experiencing the same thing that they were. The previous family said that they had received one note right before they moved. It was signed by the watcher, but they said that over the 23 years they lived there, they didn't receive anything except for before they moved. So they're claiming this watcher person is lying, but they could have also been lying just so they weren't liable for selling this house when there was clearly a stalker involved. Derek and Maria Broadus just couldn't shake their fear that they were being watched 24-7. And the letters began addressing this family by name. He was even addressing their children's names, which is so messed up. The watcher mentioned an easel that one of their daughters had set up on a porch, only visible from the side or rear of the house. And he asked in his note, is she the artist in the family? Ugh. He also asked things like, have you discovered what's in the walls yet? Imagine if he had like cameras or like something watching from the inside as well. So Derek and Maria began to feel very paranoid. Obviously they began to be really nervous being outside, going on walks, seeing their neighbors because they had no idea if just a normal neighbor they were talking to was the one sending the letters. There's like no one you can trust at this point. So because they were so worried, they decided to put their renovations on the house on hold and they went and lived somewhere else for a while with family that could protect them and so the watcher wouldn't know where they went. So a third letter arrived a couple weeks later that said, where have you gone to? 657 Boulevard is missing you. So they once again sent these letters to the police and for a time, an investigator thought that a next door neighbor named Michael Langford who had been diagnosed with schizophrenia was involved. However, they checked the DNA on the envelopes and it did not trace back to this man who they thought it was. It actually indicated that a woman sealed these envelopes with her saliva. So people began to believe that maybe the Broadduses may have created the watcher themselves, but the DNA samples showed that the family was not involved either. The police concluded that the letter writer didn't appear overtly threatening, but their obvious erratic thoughts could suggest unpredictability. And despite doing this huge investigation, they never found out who it was. Like literally nothing came of this. Finally, six months after the first letter arrived, Derek and Maria put the house on the market asking for a bit more than they had paid as they assumed their renovations would raise the value. However, because they disclosed these bizarre letters to the public, no one wanted to buy the house, understandably. In 2016, they wanted to tear down the house and rebuild it and create it into something new to hopefully sell it. But unfortunately, their plans were not approved and they got a final letter from the watcher threatening to give them revenge if they did any changes to the house. He says, maybe a car accident, maybe a fire, maybe something as simple as a mild illness that never seems to go away, but makes you feel sick day and day after day. Maybe the mysterious death of a pet, loved ones suddenly die, planes and cars and bicycles crash, bones break. And I went on to say, you wonder who the watcher is? Turn around, idiots. What? After years on the market, the Watcher House finally sold in 2019 with the Broadduses taking a $440,000 loss. And this story was so shocking that Netflix bought the rights to make, I think it was either a documentary or a movie on this. I don't know if it's on the app right now, but honestly guys, this is one of the creepiest stories I've ever read and it's completely true. It's not like a creepypasta, like this actually happened. It just shows you how bizarre the world can be and how scary the world can be. So I hope this never happens to anybody else because that's horrible. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, if that's the right word. Uh, if you want me to do like more true crime sort of videos, give this video a thumbs up and let me know. And don't forget, if you would like to enter to win this new backdrop behind me, head over to my Jessie's Bookshelf channel and comment on my recent video I just posted there. And yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!